Russian troops have been conducting a major counter-offensive operation in the Kursk region for three days, trying to push out Ukrainian forces from there. However, according to Julian Robka, an open data analyst for the German publication, Build, the offensive has been unsuccessful and is accompanied by colossal losses for the Russian side. The analyst reports that despite the declared presence of up to 50,000 soldiers in the area, including a contingent from North Korea, Russian forces have managed to capture only two small villages, Pogrebki and Darino. At the same time, the Russian army's losses amount to 28 units of armored vehicles, including modern BTR-82A, as well as more than 200 soldiers killed and wounded. What a disaster for Vladimir Putin and his generals, the analyst emphasized. The analyst showed footage with geo-referenced maps showing the results of several defeats of the Russian military. The main attempts to attack were from the north and west. Earlier, media wrote that Russian military bloggers and experts reported another unsuccessful attempt by Russian forces to attack Ukrainian armed forces' positions in the Kursk region. According to one of the Russian military experts, the attack, which some called successful, resulted in major losses and a real fiasco for the Russians. In the area of the settlement of Pogrebki, more than 10 Russian armored personnel carriers were destroyed, about 30 Russian servicemen were killed, another 20 were wounded, and presumably 10 fighters were captured. The expert notes that the Ukrainian side knew about the upcoming offensive in advance, which was actively discussed in Ukrainian publics. The Ukrainian armed forces had the opportunity to prepare to repel the attack. Despite this, the offensive was not postponed or revised. It was carried out head-on, which led to failure. The Russian military observer called this a mistake, a lie and a betrayal and suggested that additional details would appear in the coming days. As a result, no changes in the combat contact line in this area were recorded. The offensive in the direction of Pogrebki or Lovka ended in a complete fiasco, although there were no retaliatory attacks from the Ukrainian armed forces. Meanwhile, Russian units continue to be active in other areas, in particular in the areas of the settlements of Darino, Zeleny Shliak and Malaya Loknia. British troops could be sent to Ukraine to create a 1,200-kilometer buffer security zone as part of Donald Trump's plan to end the war, The Telegraph reports. These details became known after Trump's election victory and his phone conversation with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, during which Zelensky warned that appeasing Russia would mean suicide. According to Trump's plan, a demilitarized zone is supposed to be created along the front line. In exchange, the United States will continue to support weapons to Ukraine to prevent a new Russian invasion. At the same time, the United States itself does not intend to deploy its troops to ensure the security of the buffer zone and does not plan to finance this mission. The fact that the United States will not send its military to Ukraine was previously indicated by the Wall Street Journal, citing representatives of the Trump team. Former British Chancellor of the Exchequer George Osborne points out that it will be difficult for London to support Ukraine without the help of the United States. Kyiv, while expressing its readiness to listen to Trump's Proposals for a peaceful settlement emphasizes that it will resist any conditions that may be perceived as a concession to Russia. At the EU leaders' summit in Budapest, Zelensky said, there should be no illusions that a just peace can be acquired at the price of weakness. Peace is a reward for the strong. In September, the US vice presidential candidate from the Republican Party, J.D. Vance, noted that Trump's plan involves the creation of a demilitarized zone on the line of contact of troops and Ukraine's refusal to join NATO. However, Zelensky then called this proposal radical and unacceptable, saying that Ukraine was simply offered to give up its territories. During his election campaign, Trump repeatedly said that if he won, he would be able to end the war in Ukraine even before taking office in January 2025, and promised to do so in just 24 hours. At the same time, he stressed that he intended to persuade Putin to negotiate, threatening to bring down oil prices. The Russian Defense Ministry has stepped up mechanized attacks by Putin's army on Ukrainian forces' positions in Kursk region. These attacks are causing major losses on the part of the Russian armed forces, but Putin is not going to stop there. Forbes reports, 
In Kursk region, three brigades of the Ukrainian armed forces are fighting against the armies of Putin and Kim from two sides at once. It is an apocalyptic battle that costs the Russians and possibly the North Koreans dozens of vehicles and hundreds of lives. The Ukrainian Center for Defense Strategies stated that the enemy has regrouped its forces in the Kursk direction. Initially, Putin gave orders to his army to drive Ukrainian forces out of Kursk region before October the 1st. During the counterattacks, Putin's army managed to regain control of almost 50% of the previously lost territories. On the eve of possible negotiations with Ukraine, Putin wants to regain control of the entire Kursk region. To achieve this goal, he is ready to throw more and more forces into the battle. If a demilitarized line is created, the Kremlin will lose part of its land. It is against the backdrop of such statements from Trump's team that Putin is throwing more and more forces into the battle. Not long ago, 40 new BTR-82s were delivered straight from the factory. Since November the 7th, the 810th and the 155th Brigades have begun a new series of counterattacks in Kursk. They are opposed by Ukrainian forces, including the 95th, 47th and 17th Brigades. They are the ones who destroy the BTR-82s with infantry as quickly as the 810th Brigade can send them to slaughter. After a quick analysis, analysts were able to count at least three BTR-82 cemeteries in the Pogrebki area. However, some enemy armored vehicles managed to break through minefields and drones. In this section of the front, the 810th Brigade includes not only Russians and North Koreans, but also Africans and Cubans. Recall Russia is training mercenaries from Africa and Cuba in Crimea for the war in Ukraine. The occupiers are using children from the Unamia Youth Movement to protect them from Ukrainian armed forces strikes, reports the telegram channel of the partisan movement, Atesh. During ongoing reconnaissance, agents of Atesh discovered that at the Kozachi training ground in the Gagarinsky district of Sevastopol, Russian military forces are training mercenaries from African countries and Cuba, the report says. According to partisans, the training ground belongs to the 810th Marine Brigade. Military trucks are periodically seen arriving at the training ground, bringing people with appearances that are unusual for local residents reports Atesh. Moreover, shooting exercises for teenagers with the Unamia youth movement are occasionally held at the same training ground. The Russians are using children as human shields, attempting to protect their soldiers and mercenaries from strikes by Ukraine's defense forces. The partisans added, 